This video is sponsored by Squarespace.com, the place to go to control your own domain, website or online store. When considering future candidates for F1 seats during the silliest of silly seasons, one thing I often forget to check is whether the prospective drivers in junior categories qualify for a super licence. Despite sounding like it was named by an 8 year old, a super licence is a serious deal and is handed out only to the select few whose outstanding ability in single seaters qualifies them to hold the licence and only then can they take part in the FIA's premier racing series. But how do you qualify for a super license? Well, the system's changed quite a bit in the last few years, so let's go back in time, all the way back to 2015. Shoes tied themselves, cars could fly, and it was a whole lot simpler to get yourself a super license and move up to F1. Now, in order to qualify for a super license, a driver had to meet the following criteria. Firstly, you had to hold an international A license, which is the next racing license down. If you never held a super license before, to prove your racing experience, you had to meet at least one of the following requirements. Finish in the top three of either Formula 2, International Formula 3, GP2, GP2 Asia or Formula Nippon in either of the previous two seasons. Or you could have finished in the top four in the IndyCar Championship or IRL in the previous two seasons. Or you could be the current outright champion of Euro Formula 3, Formula 3 Great Britain, Italy, Japan or Spain or Formula Renault V6. If you still didn't meet any of those criteria, you can demonstrate your outstanding ability in single-seaters and could prove your skills to the FIA by driving an F1 car for a total of 300 kilometers at racing speed in a one or two day test, and then the FIA might give you the thumbs up. Achieve any of those goals and you were in and ready to race in F1. The application criteria seemed sort of legitimate enough. There weren't that many series that qualified you for a super license automatically, but there was enough wiggle room in clause F to let talented drivers from other series break into F1. But you sometimes have to bear in mind that there are some very young drivers in series like Formula 3, sometimes well under 18. 12 year old Juju Noda recently tested a Formula 3 car having already set the lap record for a Formula 4 car at Okayama International Circuit. Now while Noda is an outlier, it's times like these that you can see why the FIA start to get a little twitchy and Max Verstappen getting signed up to a Red Bull at 16 was really the catalyst for change. So from 2016 onwards, the FIA introduced a more formal points-based system for super license qualification. Finishing in certain positions in your respective championships would earn you different points as follows. So winning the Formula 2 championship would earn you 40 super license points, whereas coming fourth in the LMP1 class of WEC would earn you 10 points. In order to qualify for a super license, you first had to hold a total of 40 super license points over your previous three years in motorsport. So the top three in the F2 Championship automatically earn the requisite points, as do the top two in GP2, which was separate at the time, as does the champion of the Euro F3, LMP1 and IndyCar. But you could qualify if you won the DCM Championship for the last three years, or if you came second, third and sixth in the last three seasons of GP3, or if you came sixth in Super Formula, second in GP3 and then fourth in GP2. You get the idea, you can probably add up three numbers. Now Formula E wasn't included in the point system at the time, but as a sort of asterisk to the whole affair, the FIA mumbled that the Formula E champion would of course get a super license. You'll also notice the FIA explicitly expanded its criteria to recognise series such as touring cars, lower tier single seaters and even karting as part of the relevant experience on the road to F1, which was great. They added some further requirements to the super license, which included being 18 or over, having a valid driver's license, taking a theory test on the sporting code and regulations, and you have to have completed 80% of the past two seasons of any of these championships. Now these quite hefty super license rule changes came about due to a young baby named Max Verstappen who was signed up to Toro Rosso at the pimply age of 16, although he didn't actually debut in F1 until 17. The FIA were, perhaps rightly, concerned that their premier world motorsport series could soon be filled with literal teenagers, and for safety reasons, and perhaps to preserve the elite mystique of F1, they worked to quantify the entry bar into the sport as we've described. After all, F1 should be the best of the best, right? Now what's interesting is just how badly Max Verstappen would have failed to qualify for F1 had he had to meet the 2016 criteria in 2015. Let's have a look, shall we? Firstly on age. Being only 17, he was too young and would not qualify. Secondly, he had no driver's license, although I'm sure he would have made sure to have one had he known. Thirdly, he came third in Euro F3 in 2014, giving him 20 points, and well that's it. That's the only thing he did that qualified him for super license points. Fourthly, he did not complete 80% of the past two seasons of any qualifying championship. So on paper it does look like Max was completely unprepared for F1 upon his debut, but in reality you'd be hard pressed to find someone who thought he wasn't ready. So is Max an outlier? A rare instance of a super talent ready beyond his resume? Or are racing drivers simply ready for the top tier a lot earlier than ever, and are we blocking future talents in this way? 
or are we making sure we don't get a bunch of young, hot-headed youngsters that are all too ready to cause accidents? It's very hard to be sure, to be honest. There are hard arguments either way. Now bringing us forward to the present day, we can see the point system has been developed further, tightening up in some ways and expanding in others like a pair of old jeans. There are now a lot more championships around the world that can contribute to your super license qualification, but most of the actual points given have been reduced. Now only F1 and IndyCar can give you the full 40 points in one season, a bit of an insult to LMP1 maybe, but hey ho. So you still have to accumulate the 40 points from your previous three seasons, but you can do it from a wider range of series. Formula 2 gets more weighting as the FIA tries to encourage junior drivers to move through F2 on their way to Formula 1. And as an aside, there's also a free practice super license purely for third drivers wanting to take part in official Friday practice sessions. You'll need to have competed in six rounds of Formula 2, or accumulated just 25 points towards your super license in the last three years. Again, something Max Verstappen would not have managed. So, when we look at drivers we might be interested in plonking into an F1 seat, we should give them a quick check for points. George Russell, for example, would qualify for a super license as he's got 20 points from finishing third in Formula 3, 25 points on winning GP3, which is 45 points already, and if he wins or comes second in Formula 2, as seems likely, he'll have a massive 85 points in the bank. Now Jack Aitken, on the other hand, has 7 points from finishing fifth in GP3 in 2016, 20 from coming second in GP3 in 2017, and if he finishes 10th in F2 this year, he'll have a total of 30 points to his license, which isn't enough. Now of course, once you've got a super license, you can keep renewing it year on year at considerable costs. As long as the FIA are happy, you're up to the task and have done the mileage. And that's how someone like Kubica has a super license, despite not competing in recent racing series. It's not easy to get a super license, and that's something that Red Bull will be aware of considering that precisely none of their junior drivers are close to qualifying for one. The only one of their junior drivers with points to their license is Fukuzima, who has 18 to his name. Red Bull, who are used to promoting drivers from within, using their bank of junior drivers, now have an empty seat at Toro Rosso following Ricardo's merry dance to Renault, and they have no one in their bank to fill it with. Now when considering your dream gift for 2019 and beyond, it can be pretty tricky to keep track of who from your favourite drivers is actually eligible to break into F1, so do check them against this point chart or find a friendly, hardworking website that'll do the hard work for you. Keep an eye on your dream F1 drivers currently making their way through the junior formula and keep a mental tally of their super license points total, and keep hoping they'll get there in the end. And thank you to squarespace.com for sponsoring this video. I've been using them for a while and it's just easier to be honest. Their designer templates make everything look lovely and professional so I can just work on the content, which is the bit I love. They even manage the email accounts, which I've always found to be a bit of a pain to be honest. So try it yourself for free at squarespace.com and once you're ready to go all in, go to squarespace.com slash chainbearf1 for 10% off your first purchase. You got a great idea? You can make it with Squarespace.